welcome Mr. Terry Brannan and Mr. Tony Brannan. Have a seat and relax. That was a few years ago, I understand. The, I don't uh, remember it. Don't remember? No. Nope. No? Down here in very small print, it says Freddie Matthews and Terry Brandon at the piano with progressive sounds from Europe. Must no? have happened. <laughs> <laughs> How did you first uh, make it over to Bermuda? What, um, what brought you out here? I originally came in 1949 with the uh, orchestra at the reopen of the Princess Hotel. Mm -hmm. Whose band was that then in uh, those Jack days? Jack Wallace. And any of the guys that came out with you, are they still still here in the island, or they moved on to? I'm things? not. I think Charlie Berry is still here. Mm -hmm. With the yeah mustache. Yeah. yeah. And Tony and Terry, by the way, father and son. I'll let you figure out which is which. And uh, Tony, <laughs> how are things? How are things down at uh, the Forty Thieves these days? It's it's not been good news the past couple of months, but uh, how are things looking now? Um. Uh, things are fine. It's just uh, I think there's a changing trend in the entertainment field. We've been catering to a rock type of audience in our live club, and uh, I think those days are sort of over with for the time being. But uh, who knows? We've got uh, we own that big building down on Front Street. We've got lots of things we can do with it. Mm -hmm. I guess we're regrouping. I guess that's the best way to put it. You have an athletic club upstairs now. Is that uh, all that's, part and parcel? It's not or? ours, but we do have its uh, Bermuda Nautilus Fitness Center. Yeah which Nick and uh, Nick Jones and Bobby Mulder are, and they, they're on the top floor. I see. When you started out with the business, um, who were some of the name acts that you brought in the very start of, of the opening of the 40 Thieves Club? The uh, first one was Mel Tomé. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a group of uh, dancers called the June Taylor Dancers uh, that you may, may remember them from the uh, Jackie Gleason yes. show. Yeah. And we had a 12-piece band and uh, we served food, mm -hmm. and we served lunch, and I used to play for lunch, do the accounts in the afternoon. Play for his lunch. <laughs> You're right, play for the lunch. Uh, yeah. Do the cabaret at night, play in the orchestra, get home about four o'clock, mm -hmm. get up at six, and I did that for about, I guess, 12 years, and then I had to have a quadruple bypass, so then I'd take it easy. Goodness me. <laughs> Am I correct in, in saying, I believe we talked about this once before, that uh, Louis Armstrong was one of the headliners at the, at the club at one time? No, that's not correct. Louis, Louis didn't play the club. Uh, mm -hmm. I brought Louis in and we, uh, to do concerts at the Rosebank Theatre, mm -hmm. and he did uh, three. So that tape that we listened to that day uh, that you brought along for a radio thing that we did with Quentin Ednis as the, that's right, yes. as the announcer on the, on the program, right. um, who was your favorite? performer that, that you had that you bought and obviously you had to try and bring people in that were going to be popular for the mass audience but who was a particular favorite for yourself I'd find that very difficult to answer because uh, I always felt and I still do feel that one should not in business present people that you like you've mm -hmm. got to present what you consider the audience like yeah. so uh, I always felt I presented the best that was available and you know, the selection was wide I loved all of them mm -hmm. Now, Tony, uh, you are following musically, uh, or have followed musically, in your dad's footsteps. How are the, the uh, recordings going? Because you did one, I guess it must be about two or three years ago now, the last time we spoke. Well, you know, I have my sort of professional hat, and then I have my, um, my sort of hobby hat, and uh, I've always liked to dabble around with music. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always had a fascination for recording studios. And if you can write, you can get in, uh, if you, as long as you've got some money, you can go into a studio and put down what you want to put down with, with whether it's three musicians or five musicians. And now, of course, with the synthesizer and everything and all the different kinds of machines, you can do a lot on your own. Mm -hmm. You can program drums on your own. You can program the synthesizers. Um, I'm kind of excited about a new studio that's going to be opening in Bermuda real soon. Um, Ian Marshall's opening a studio, and I hope to get in there. I just heard a cheer from upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon after he opens up, I, I, I hope, uh, I'm sure a lot of the mediums will take a, the, the opportunity that, that can compose. As a matter of fact, you don't even really have to play an instrument. If you can just compose, you can get other players to, to, do it to play you. for you. So, right. Is the story about uh, John Lennon being in your club true? Uh, I understand that you were in the club one night, and yeah. Perhaps you'd like he to tell the rest of the story. Well, he was there. Uh, he came in, and uh, I kept walking by him for about... Uh, he was there for about four hours, and I kept walking by him, and I kept thinking, 
it was in 1980. It was in the summer of 1980, and of course he died in December of 1980. Um, I kept walking backwards and forwards, and uh, I kept thinking, this that looks like John Lennon, but he's supposed to be baking pies for Yoko <laughs> in the Dakota, which is what, of course, all the publicity was about at the time. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, it can't be. And it wasn't until he was leaving, and then I realized it was him. But uh, And is he one of your idols, would you say? I would say that yeah. the Beatles and John Lennon, yeah. And Julian you? Lennon was here a couple of weeks ago, so uh, I said hello to him when he was here. Didn't miss that nice opportunity. Yeah. Well, what's he like, um, having met it's his just dad? like his dad. Yeah. He looks like his dad, and he's got a sarcastic humor like his father. Mm. <laughs> 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 uh, Mr. Brandon, you wear a number of uh, hats. Golfing is, I know, a great love of yours. Do you uh, still keep a hand in uh, organizing tournaments? and? Uh, yes, I'm, I, uh, I'm still on the Board of Trustees of Port Royal, I'm mm -hmm. Chairman of the Board of Trustees of St George's and uh, I've just uh, retired as President of the uh, Professional Golf Association and uh, I keep my hand in and I try to keep my handicap high because it's profitable. Great. <laughs> there we go. I think this sounds, maybe you have to give me a few tips after the show. <laughs> Tony and Terry Brown, and thank you very much for coming along today. Thank you. And I hope to see you again very soon with some better news, perhaps, about uh, live music, if that's going to be at all possible. Thanks very much indeed. We'll be right back in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs>